Dramatic videos for me recently. I understand that. Dramatic. Is he all right? Boss! But it's true. I have sold off my stocks. And here's why. Cash rules everything around me. They thought that I fell off for a second. They were doubting. I would never fall off. Never ever who they clown it. I just had to keep sacking this. Rising housing market wins votes. Falling housing market loses votes. But what it doesn't do is help the economy in the long term because people have got so much debt now and if at some point those interest rates do rise, as I think most economists would agree they will do, well, that's going to really annihilate most households' finances and then, of course, the economy. First of all, just so you don't think I'm dragging you into some sort of clickbait. What aren't you telling us? This sale has nothing to do with how I feel about the markets. I don't care about Michael Burry, I'm not trying to time the market, and I'm not trying to develop some sort of war chest. That's a hate word, and it's insensitive to butt pirates. But I also can't say that this sale is completely isolated from the economic situation that we're going through right now. No matter how many different ways I want to frame this, I feel like a bit of a hypocrite. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Because for two years now, I've been trying to show you how I'm building a dividend reinvestment portfolio and I'm going to hold onto these stocks for an incredibly long time. And I fully planned on sticking with that, I promise. Mentiroso. This week I was supposed to show you that in the month of September, I had the most dividends paid to me in one month ever. And I was still beating the S&P 500 on a month to month basis. But something happened in the economic world that I can't control. And a very bad financial decision from a younger Briscoe has finally caught up to me. Hello? 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 And this is my house. It's pretty good, pretty cosy, and best of all, for the winter, it's well insulated. But I currently only own about 80% of this house, and that 80% is paid off through a mortgage. The other 20% of this house is owned by the government, or at least a company that the government sold the debt to. Property prices already at dizzying heights. Is the UK about to experience another bubble? And will the government's new scheme to help first-time buyers be a contributing factor? This is a shared equity deal, or more commonly known as help to buy. The help to buy scheme was set up a few years ago to help first-time buyers get onto the housing ladder. They did this by helping young couples buy most of their house and keeping 20% of it back to pay for later. With help to buy, the government will lend you up to 20% of the value of a new build home, up to 40% in London, and you only need a 5% deposit. It's one of a number of government schemes that could help you own your home. Once you get those keys, the clock starts ticking, and in five years, you've either got to pay it all off, or you start getting charged interest on the rest of that equity. You're supposed to pay this off in one of three ways. First, you sell your house. The theory here is that in five years, you're going to want to move up the next rung of that ladder. You sell your house, the government gets their bit back, plus a bit of appreciation, and you get a brand spanking new house. In fact, you can do help to buy twice. Trust me, I've done it. Secondly, you cough up the cash. You can pay that entire equity back in one big lump sum. One of the problems we found when we came to office is that people could get a mortgage, but they needed a massive deposit to buy a flat or a house, even if they could afford the mortgage payments. The banks and the building societies have been badly damaged by the crash, and the, they weren't lending, so the buyers couldn't buy and the builders couldn't build. That's why we introduced Help to Buy. It's good to think of this one as you're delaying that deposit. A big problem for first time buyers was that they can't save for a deposit with such sky high rent prices. The government taking that 20% equity allows you to essentially defer your deposit and it gives you five years to save up for what you should have saved up before you bought the house. You just have to hope the price of your house doesn't appreciate too much through high inflation or some random thing that's never gonna happen. Happen. because when the price of the house goes up, the government also want their fair share of that as well. And finally, what most people are thinking of doing is adding an extra mortgage to their already massive mortgage. Again, the theory is if the five years, your family will be a little bit higher up the career ladder, have a bit more disposable income, and therefore be able to add a little bit more debt on top and pay for the rest of the house. 
But the UK economy had other ideas and with inflation skyrocketing, pushing house prices to ridiculous highs. Have the markets rejected trustonomics, Prime Minister? And now interest rates have gone up to levels that are pretty unsustainable for the price of those houses. Two of those options are firmly off the table. The help to buy scheme is controversial, with many experts asking why is the government incentivizing borrowing? Why are they subsidizing mortgage lending at a time when they're trying to reduce national debt? And what happens to the housing market and homeowners when interest rates start to rise? And I don't think I'm the only one in this situation. In fact, I'm a pretty good saver. Statistics are showing that even in 2022, people are still using help to buy to pay for houses. And even people on the original help to buy scheme still have not paid off their equity loan. That's just some general fear that I wanna push out there about the UK housing market. Call it a miscalculation, call it what you will, but my decision here is to pay this off in cash and get this whole episode out the way. So there goes all of my emergency fund and half of my stock. As painful as it is, I'm still pretty lucky. My stocks were still in the green. I haven't lost anything on speculation. And if I'm honest, I don't feel like I'm selling during a dip, even though I definitely am. The only consolation here is that I haven't actually lost any money. Let's be very clear on that. And as soon as I get my emergency fund back up and running again, I will be back in the market more aggressively than ever. And people who work hard and do the right thing have been able to own a home of their own. Okay, so here's my portfolio after selling it all off. I'm now at 54,622, but I've had to sell off 19,685. And that's still in my ISA account, actually. I haven't withdrawn that yet because there's an outside chance that I can get through this little episode without actually spending any of my money on the stocks. But I've had to sell it just in case because number one rule of the stock market for me is that if you need the money, you shouldn't have it in the market. So my job right now is just to keep this in cash for now, just in case I do need it. It's sadly a decision that really is <sighs> so painful, but I have to do it. So left in my portfolio now is 34,948, and that's 4.67% down. So me selling off all of my stocks that were in the green at the time when I sold, this actually put my portfolio down 10% at the time, and now it's fortunately back up to 4.66. Trust me, I know that's a bad decision. I know about the opportunity cost that I've lost there don't make it any more painful by telling me that in the comments. But I'm currently down 4.68 and I still have a few of the old favorites back in. ASML is one stock that I have been adding to until recently. So I've done very, very nicely on ASML uh, as it started to recover. Whether it continues to recover with this market, I'm not so sure. I think this is a small bear market rally before we finally end up with the last bit. At least I'm hoping so, that's the important part. Google lost about 7% today on bad earnings. Can't wait, trust me, I cannot wait to start buying the stock again. Uh, it's actually put me in a good position with a bit of cash. AT&T doing very well after its recent earnings report, up 2.54% today and uh, still down 50% since I started buying it. Avalon Bay community is doing very well because of the rent prices that I was talking about earlier. Rent in, is doing much better than mortgages right now, even better in America. So there is a lot to be said for Avalon Bay, which, which pays a lovely dividend. The rest of the stocks, main ones that I've sold were Raytheon Technologies, BAE Systems, which was an absolute pain to sell off it's so so painful trust me because that stock was doing so well but i did think it had been pushed a little bit far i thought that the stock had been valued well with the ukraine crisis it's currently at a pe ratio of 19.5 which bae system probably should not be trading at as it's an old british uk company 
but I would have held this if I wasn't in this crappy financial situation that I'm in right now I would have held this I promise but that was one of the main ones that I had to get rid of a few of my stocks doing okay I'm waiting for these to return Seagro had a very very bad year so far but is starting to recover and I have been adding to this stock as well and like I said as soon as my emergency fund is built back up I will be adding pretty much to all these stocks and finding stocks at a good rate I just hope that the stocks like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are all still quite in the dumpster by the time I have enough money. Two stocks that I couldn't sell though were ASML and KLA. Two semiconductor stocks which I think have a massive hold on the semiconductor market. I think those stocks are very important for the future and I wasn't gonna sell those. But that's my entire stock portfolio now. It's at 34,957. And that will be going up very aggressively as soon as I've got some money.